Yeah, good evening, class. Um, tonight, uh, we are starting with um, uh, project management techniques. We are trying to cover two topics today, project management techniques and uh, uh, project uh, methodology. But we have to start with project management techniques. In project management, we have uh, uh, so many techniques, uh, a lot of um, uh, a school of thoughts and professionals, a professional body, they've come up with um, their, their own techniques. There's a lot of techniques, but the, the techniques I'm stating here is the most generally used techniques that uh, you must need to know it to perform very well as a project manager. And some of these techniques are work breakdown structure, critical path methods, or some call it critical path analysis, Gantt charts, Scrum, and uh, Kanban. These are important techniques in project management. If you know how to, to operate on these techniques very well, then, then you are starting your, your career as a project manager uh, properly because some of these techniques they are a bit technical. It's just not a theoretical technique. You have to do it uh, technically. And uh, that's where your, your assignment, your uh, homework will come from. You must have to, to go and uh, try one of these techniques after to this um, session. Let's start with... Um, work breakdown structure. What is work breakdown structure? A work breakdown structure is a visual, hierarchical, and the deliverable oriented the construction of a project. It is a helpful diagram for project managers because it allows them to break down the project it allows them to break down um, the project scope and visualize all the tasks are required to complete their a project so if you are looking at this diagram you can see this is a work breakdown structure. If you are looking at it in a diagram, you see the way it breaks down. You can see the way this uh, diagram breaks down the whole thing down, the whole structure. Look at the project from the hierarchy down, uh, from the initiation stage, the planning, to execution, to control. So you see under each um, heading, under each um, group, there is um, a breakdown of the whole, there's a, a breakdown of the, 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 the structure. It's atomized. If like you see, you look at the initiation, under initiation, you see a point, uh, that is when you are initiating a project. That's the first thing you need to do. You appoint a project manager and uh, a project team. That's the first thing uh, the management needs to do while initiating a project. Then you define the project goal. The next thing is get the customers buy-in and assess the and then assess the, the feasibility. Please um mute yourself, please. Okay. 
So, um, if you come to the this heading, the planning heading, you see the the breakdown structure. If you look at the risk analysis. You create project schedule and the task plan. You set budgets, establish communication process. Then you come to execution. You, uh, the, the breakdown structure is uh, a status update, compare plan uh, via actual progress, improve uh, process co uh, continuously and the documentation. Then when you come to control, control the uh, scope creep, change management process, performance tracking, quality measurement. Then when you come to closure, is uh, you document the lesson learned, a project report, a project delivery, uh, delivery, and the project uh, uh, close up meeting. That's how you break a project down. That's what we call project breakdown structure. If you can see it now, you are looking at it, you know what you are doing at any stage. If you are in stage, stage of initiation, you know, looking at your breakdown structure, you know what you are doing. If you are the planning stage, looking at the breakdown structure, you know what you are doing. If you are the execution, you know what you are doing. So that's how a project manager should organize uh, his or her work. And anybody looking at it will know that you are a qualified uh, professional. So that is uh, all about work brain breakdown structure. And after this um, uh, tonight's uh, session, this is going to be your first assignment. You need to go and uh, create a breakdown structure. You need to use um, uh, a lucid chart. You go to Lucid Chart. You, re you register with Lucid Chart. You sign up with Lucid Chart. Then it will help you to create a breakdown structure. And you, uh, after creating it, you come up with the with the picture, PNG picture, which you are going to post on your um, group timeline. Or you go to draw.io. I'm going to post all those links where you are going to create your breakdown structure. You must do it if you know you need to, to progress with us because uh, we are not playing. This is a serious matter. So you need to start learning how to do this. You need to create, I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, post uh, this particular picture so you can use it as a guide. But uh, some of these uh, software that I've just mentioned, they have uh, templates for you to use. So it's either you can look from here and do it, or you can use from their template and create it. It must not be perfect, but you have to do something. So that is your uh, first assignment. After this, I will equally put this assignment on the notice board and equally in the group, uh, group chat so that everybody uh, will see, see it and, <coughs> and they participate. So that is the work breakdown structure. <clears throat> the next thing is uh, uh, critical path method. Critical path method uh, is a method for modeling projects where you put all necessary factors involved in your project and output the optimal timeline for completing it. Factors to impute in your model include the time estimates, tax dependencies, milestones or deliverables, deadlines set by the clients or stakeholders. So this is the critical part. The critical part are the timeline. You must meet up the deadlines. You need, need to meet uh, you must know the duration of every activity 
and then you must work to keep within the duration. That's why they call it critical. It's critical because once you meet the deadline, then the, it, it start affecting the problem. The, the project it becomes critical to the to the the, the the project. So you must work with the critical part. Know your critical part. Know when is due to submit a deliverable. If you miss that deliverable, then your project will start suffering. You must know the dependencies. These are the things you need to, uh, uh, the critical part will help you to identify. You need to know the milestones. For instance, looking at uh, this um, diagram, implement budget pro. If you, you see this, um, uh, it's still a, a breakdown structure. Looking at this breakdown structure, you can see installation. Under installation, this installation, the activity is meant to be within 20 days. Then once you exceed 20 days, then your project is in danger. Under installation, we have um, obtain PO and other server, set up server and load OS, load and configure software, perform server stress test, and then installation is complete. Where you see installation is complete is the uh, milestone. It means that you've completed this stage. So you can see everything here, they've got time. You can't just start doing a project without time. Every every activity, tax, deliverable, they are time based. And there you can see the software will equally help you to look at it from this Gantt chart. From this Gantt chart, you can see who is handling who. Like if, if you're looking at uh, obtain PO and other server, which should be completed within three days is Mickey Cab and set up server and load OS, which should be completed within four days is Larry Barnett. You can see that. So that is how you manage a project and your project will, will look so, so decent. You know who is doing who. And this will help you to track your project. When you miss a deadline, it is going to reflect here. The, the, this Gantt chart is going to warn you that you are missing your, your critical path and your project is uh, sliding into trouble. So these are the importance of critical path analysis in project uh, management. So that's is all about critical parts. Over time, you still need to do all those things. You still need to, to go and try it out on how to create it. But I don't want to uh, give you too much um, task at the same time. So finish the one I've given to you first and we'll look at other ones. A lot of them are coming if you really need to learn this uh, skill because it's a powerful skill set. If you have it, believe me, you are going to learn a very powerful job. So this is um, uh, all about uh, critical parts. Then another important technique in, in, in managing project, tracking your project is um, Gantt charts. Gantt charts, works, they all work together. You work with critical parts. Uses critical parts to um, critical part uses Gantt chart in project tracking. If you look at this diagram, it's just uh, similar to the other diagram. So it's still um, this particular one. You see the Gantt chart. The one at the right hand is the Gantt chart. It helps you to to visualize um, the project deliverables in a, a historical 
a horizontal bar chart. A bar chart is a tool for planning and scheduling projects. Timelines and their tasks are converted into horizontal bar chart, showing start and end date, dependencies, scheduling and deadline, how much of the task is completed per stage and who is the task owner. This is useful for tracking a large team and stakeholders when um, the scope changes. So as you can see, it helps you to define your project, tell you who is doing who, what are you doing, showing it in a diagram, you are seeing it. This is not just like, um, it's not about writing. When you look at your, your, your diagram, you open your computer, your software, you look at it, you see what is happening, you know what is going on at any point in time. It's a very interesting um, technique in project management. You must know this. Uh, breakdown structure, critical part, and gun chart is a, a must know. You must know this. These are, no matter the methodology you are using in project management, you cannot run away from uh, these uh, three techniques. So you must have to, it's not so difficult to know. If you know how to press your phone, the, all these things are softwares. If you know how to press your phone, do all, navigate, go to Facebook, do, then you can do all these things because they're all, they're all softwares. So that is uh, um, all about gun charts. Or you need to, to try it out um, within the, as we progress. The time will come when you start doing all these things. I'll start giving you um, a, a task and assignment to perform. Uh, some of the, 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 the softwares we use in doing this thing is uh, Microsoft uh, Project. You use Microsoft Project. It's a paid um, software. That's one issue there. It's a paid. It's not a free. But there is a free one which works exactly like Microsoft Project. It's an, uh, it's a, it's an open source software, which um, over time, all of you need to download it into your system. Like when I was uh, telling you people that um, uh, in this uh, program, you must have a laptop, you must have a computer that you cannot uh, use your phone. Uh, it's a requirement. It's because of all these things. Because there's no way you can do all these things with your phone. I know, I know the situation of things, but for you to really start performing uh, in this uh, program, you must have a, a computer where you can download software like this and be practicing. You know, because if you if you are, if you are planning for to get a job, these are some of the things your employer, your pro prospective employer need to understand, you know, he need to understand, do you know how to do it? They are not going to ask you um, what qualification do you have. These days, employers, they don't ask about qualification. I've done, I've worked in so many organizations, but none of them ever asked me uh, what is their qualification or where did you graduate from? What they want to know is, have, can you do it? Tell me how to do it. Uh, can you plan a project using um, a Gantt chart or a work breakdown? So how do you, how do you implement a, a, a work breakdown structure? How do you plan your project using work breakdown structure? These are the kind of questions that once you know how to do, to do it, demonstrate, be able to you know, convince them that you can do it. That's it. Nobody cares about whether you are from uh, uh, Unilag or from uh, uh, Harvard or UNN. Nobody cares. So that's it. So that's why it's good to learn skills, not uh, acquiring certificates, you know? So that's why here in this school, I'm not talking about certificates. Although when you finish, you get your certificate, but I'm not talking about certificate because I know that certificate these days is useless. What is important is skills. And these things you are looking is powerful skills for, for highly skilled professionals. These are what they, they, they demand globally all over the world. If you know this case, you are, you are perfect. So the next thing 
uh, we are done with GAN charts for now. We need to come back with uh, all these things later. But for now, we are done with GAN charts. You've seen GAN charts. You know how to uh, what it means or how to use um, how uh, it looks like, not how to use it because you've not tried it out. A time will come when we have a, a technical session where I'll be operating this thing. Uh, you'll be seeing how I'm operating it. And uh, that's how we learn some of this thing. But for now, let's get the, the knowledge first and then we go into the practical. The next thing we need to look is a Scrum. Scrum is a framework under Agile uh, project management. It's a very powerful uh, framework and tool. It's a powerful technique. Companies these days, they don't play with people who knows Scrum framework, who knows Scrum methodology. It's under Agile project management. So uh, in this uh, project, uh, even in, uh, in, uh, during the, the work experience, what we'll be using is uh, Agile methodology. And this is the, the Scrum is a part of Agile methodology we are going to use to be implementing most of the, the project. So it's very important that you understand Scrum. You know, on that Scrum, there is so many roles. Like we have Scrum Master on that Scrum. You have a product owner on that Scrum. Like now, I've got my certification. I'm a certified Scrum Master and I'm a certified product owner. So these are some of the things, you know. Although the certification is done, it's not so that um, necessary. The main necessary, the, the main important thing is to understand the framework, how it was, not the certification, because no company has they've never asked me, uh, "Am I certified?" All they ask me is, uh, "How do you implement Scrum uh, framework?" So that is why it's important for you to learn this case, learn how the Scrum works. Scrum is a framework within which people can address complex problems through productively and creatively delivering project, uh, products of the highest possible value. Scrum master uh, uh, foster an environment where uh, a product owner orders the work for a complex problem into a product backlog. The Scrum team turns a selection of the work into an increment of value during sprints. The Scrum team and its stakeholders inspect the result and adjust for the next sprint. So this is a cycle. The main thing they do is a sprint is um in Scrum is a, a sprint. So the main thing in um a, a scrum is this um, event called a sprint. This is, if you can see here, is a is an event. It's between one to four weeks, but most of the time it's two weeks. Two weeks for you to plan and execute uh, a product. How it works is that the product owner. We take um, input, we get a, a, a deliverable, what will be done from the customer or the stakeholder. They will tell the, the, the product owner their challenges. And then the product owner will then list all those challenges in the form of features. That is it here, features. We call it a product backlog. And then the product owner will take this product backlog to the Scrum team, where 
they will have a meeting. The Scrum team comprises of the Scrum master and the Scrum team, the developers. We call it development team. Development team consists of the um, developers, test, testers, business analysts, and these are the people that make up the development team and the product owner. So they will have a meeting on how they are going to develop that um, a product backlog, which then they select and they convert into, we we'll call it user stories, and then a plan around it. When they select those uh, a product backlog, those product backlog they selected from the product will then become sprint backlog. And then they work around it, develop it into um, a piece of uh, a software component. And then they will call the stakeholders to come and see what they've done. And if the stakeholders, they are happy with what they've done, then it will then be deployed or published. And then the team will come together to look at what they've uh, done, what are they doing and what are they not doing well. And then they will go back and take another uh, piece of work. So that's how is a cycle. And this is the way you people are going to be working during your work experience. For instance, I'm going to use um, uh, a life example to illustrate the way um, Scrum works. Um, for instance, uh, in a, an e-commerce website, the, the customers, when they want to buy um, a product, they need to uh, put the product into a shopping cart. And then from the shopping cart, they will check out and then make payments. So, and then the order will be processed and then delivered to them. So for them to put a product in the shopping cart, the e-commerce website need to have functionality where you will, will, will touch the product and the product will enter the shopping cart. And from the shopping cart, you'll be able to check out. So shopping cart and then check out page is a feature, is a product backlog. So if it doesn't, if a website doesn't have, maybe it's a, it's a normal website and the owner of the website decided that they want to start selling something on their website, because all these websites we are seeing Anytime the owner of the website, they decide to start selling something, they can convert it and start selling something on the website. Website is just like a house. You can decide to put a door in any part of your house, anytime. You can decide to convert window to door. You can decide to close a, a, a door or close the window. So that's how website. So if they want to start selling something, there's piece of functionalities, features, in that website that will help people to buy. So they need to uh, itemize it as features of that website. That is the, we call it features or product backlog. So the Scrum team, when the, the product owner have selected those features, you go to the Scrum team. You say, oh, team, look, we have something to do. We need to create a shopping cart for this, uh, uh, our customer. And the, the team will say, okay, shopping cart, what kind of, uh, what kind of a shopping cart? Are they selling a vehicle or are they selling, a, what kind of product are they selling? Then they will analyze it as a team. That's called it sprint planning. Is when they are analyzing that as a team, is that when they are planning. After planning, then they will move it to a sprint backlog where they will say, okay, this is how we are going to start building this uh, shopping cart. Yeah, that so so um, features will come in. 
the 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 customer should be able to to put the product in the shopping cart if the customer so that product they have to break it in down into user stories user stories is what this shopping cart need to like the customer need to be able to put the product into the shopping cart and if the customer changes his mind that he don't want to buy again the customer can click delete and he will delete the product from the shopping cart so some of these features, small, small features the shopping cart have is what we call uh, user stories. And then after building that, and uh, they complete building it, then they will go to the stakeholders. Yeah, this is the stakeholders. Where they will still stakeholders? Yeah, we have delivered this shopping cart and it's now working. Come and see how it's working. And the stakeholders will go, okay, yeah, you guys have done a good job. And that is it. They will then deploy it. They will add it to the uh, e-commerce, uh, to the site that they are trying to convert to e-commerce. And if you go there, you see that they'll be able to start selling shop, uh, selling something on their uh, website. And every other features they want to add, maybe they, they, they want the customers to be able to be paying directly with credit card, they will add it. If they want the customers to be paying maybe, um, uh, payment or delivery, they will add it. Over time, if they want to even build a, a an app for that uh, a website, they will still do that. These are deliverables. You call it a product backlog. And that's how they deliver all these softwares we are seeing, even iPhone 5. 5. That's what the, the, the this um, Apple, that's how they started using uh, Scrum to build Apple. Apple, all of us are using. You see Apple 1, Apple 2, Apple 3. So Apple is just a normal phone. But when they add some features on that Apple, they will release it. That's how these things work. They will maybe first add some features. They will release it as Apple 1 or iPhone 1. Then they will come again. The, the, the owner of the phone will say, OK, we want to add another thing. You call you people, you add another thing. They will inspect it and it's working and the customers are happy. They will deliver it. It becomes iPhone 2. They say, okay, we need to add another. Thing. So small, small piece of functionality. They keep on building it, building it gradually, gradually. And the customers are happy. So this is opposite of waterfall methodology, which the Nokia phone was using before. Nokia, the way they plan their own is that once they want to build a phone, they want to build all the functionalities they want in that phone from A to Z before they deploy the phone. And maybe before they even finish building the phone and deploying it, the, the customers will not like it again. And that's what happened to Nokia. Nokia started losing market, you know? And the iPhone, that's how iPhone were doing their own. They are building it small, small, asking customers, what do you want again? To come in this iPhone. Customers will, during the review, uh, we want it this way, we want this way, they will go and ask it. Based on customers' need, if you come to here, you see input from end users, customers. Input from end users means that they need to know what the customers want. These days, customers are the king. They will always ask you, what is the customer? During review, this is when we tell the, the company what we want. Like you see this course, this course I'm uh, producing, you see where, um, where I'm, I'm, you see rating there. At the end of the day, you go there and rate the course based on the performance. If you are not happy, you, you rate me low. If you are happy, you rate me high. And then later I will put where you write something. Uh, can you add so, so, so this in this? Uh, maybe can you make this thing better by adding this? So you are done telling me what you want to see in this. Uh, a website where you are going to, to receive your learning. And from what you are saying, I'll be improving the website. And that will start dragging, bringing more customers, more students, because I'm doing, I'm doing what you want, you know, and I'm making you happy. So that's how uh, Scrum wants. That's how we use Scrum to drive markets. So that is... Um, all about Scrum. There's a lot to talk about Scrum because that is what we are going to be using to solve most of our problems as a business analysts and uh, uh, 
project money. So you must master these um, skills, scrum skill. Even in future, you can train to become a scrum master. It's a very powerful um, job. So many scrum masters here in UK are receiving 500 uh, pounds every day, you know, which is not a small money. Product owners, they're all of them. They are getting 500 pounds every day as product owners, uh, scrum masters, which is, that is a very big amount of money, you know? So that is um, about scrum. And then we are going to move to Kanban. Kanban is a project management tool that allows you to get a more visual overview of the tasks that either needs to get done or are completed. It consists of three column physical or digital board to do in progress and done. So during Scrum, there is this um, uh, board we use um, to manage our activities. We are so many developers and uh, everybody in the development team, everybody is working on the role assigned to them. Very soon, we are going to start using it. You know, because this will help the project manager to know what you are doing at any point in time, the stage you are, what you have done. Like you can see this Kanban, this is uh, to do. This is in progress. This is done. Now, if I've um, assigned uh, this uh, task to this uh, project team member, when the project team member, uh, this is what I said, uh, this is uh, what you need to do assigned to him. So when he, he, he wants to start the job, he now to do it, not started. When he wants to start the job, he will move this um, task to uh, in progress. And I, the project manager, when I, I come here and I'll see, oh, Mr. I have started the, the, the doing it, it's in progress, okay. So I will then, so once the Mr. A finish, uh, finishes the project, you then move it to done. And automatically, I will get a notification. So you've finished doing that. And that's how we have been, we'll be doing everything. This will help me to know who is doing who. And when you've completed your own task, maybe from there, I will add, assign more responsibilities uh, to you. So this is a, is a visual representation where you manage your task and the uh, uh, deliverables. So it's not uh, this one is not a big uh, a deal. It's very simple in the in the project management. It can be a digital board like this one is a digital board in um, Jira. Jira is another tool which you you need to come um, to know later. It's a project management a workplace. So this is a Jira. Uh, workplace. That's where I, I, uh, we pick this um, a picture from to, to illustrate for you. But Kanban board is not only digital, it can be a uh, physical board. Like this one is physical board. You know, you can come and uh, you and your team might decide if you don't have a um, um, you don't have uh, money for, for Jira or software or this, you can do it physically you, using, uh, using a, a board, notice board, office notice board. You can even use this thing to analyze. After analyzing it, then you can then transfer it to your digital board using sticker notes. You know, everybody, you can write what you need to be done and paste it on the board. And when it's done, uh, one is on pro, you put it here. One year you finish um, after oh, the process. You, 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 it to the next. Hmm. Hmm. 
So this is um, uh, how Kemban um, board works. And um, that's um, Kemban for you. At this point, I will want to ask um, a question. If you have any question, you can um, ask before we move to the next topic. Um, Helene Mustafa, you are raising your hand. Do you have any question? No, sir. Sorry, it was a mistake. Okay, reduce. Uh, re bring your hand down then. Okay. Yes, I have your question. Okay. Um, actually, is not um related to this particular one, but yes, I wanted to ask that question. I couldn't unmute myself. I'm still a bit confused about the actual difference between a stakeholder and a stakeholder, client, and um, the owner of the project. These three things are a bit confusing to me in the whole process. Whenever you mention it, I get a bit confused. Can you throw more lines, sir, please? Okay. All these things, clients, Owner of the project, they are all stakeholders. Every 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 person in a project is a stakeholder. What is a stakeholder? A stakeholder is somebody who has a stake in something. I'll use your household for instance. In your house, a stakeholder is the father the mother, the children, even if you have a house help, they are all stakeholders. Yeah? Because everybody have interest in that house. Everybody have a stake. So if you are if you need to have a, a, a family meeting, then you need to call everybody uh, in that meeting because they all have stake in that yeah, in that household. So that's how project works. Everybody, both you, the project manager, both you, the business analyst, both anybody, even the customers at times are stakeholders because they have interest. After all, whatever you are, you are producing, you are producing to please the customers. So if you knew how to carry your customers along to, for them to make an input when you are um, trying to produce something, it's very good to do that. So stake, a client can be, for instance, you are working in a consulting firm. A client can come to the consulting firm. I'm having problem with my company. I'm, have, I'm selling, I have an e-commerce uh, site where I'm selling something. Or I want to start an e-commerce website, but I don't have the knowledge. I don't know how to do it. You go to the consulting firm. What the consulting firm do is they solve problems for companies. Any kind of problem you have in a company, the consulting firm will help you. You pay them, and they will help you to solve your problem. Is it to produce a website? Is it to produce um, a, a mobile phone? Like uh, Zenit Bank, if Zenit Bank, they want to produce their mobile, they this their mobile app, which we are now using to transfer money, they will go to either KPMG or Price Water and take Price Water. We know that you guys are experts in a, or any kind of a digital solution. We want a, a good uh, uh, mobile device for our customers. 
And the uh, price water will say, okay, we'll do this. Like when I was working in um, Lagos uh, with um, Mobitel, our consulting firm then is uh, price water. They always come to our company to take requirements based on what we want to do. Then we are trying to, to deploy SAP. So they always come in to know how we are. Then we are, we are using Sage accounting system. And then because of the SAP, the robustness of SAP, then we want to migrate from Sage to SAP. So they come to take requirements on what we are doing and what we want to achieve. So we are the client to the um, KPM price water then. So that is it, that's, that's how it works. So a, a, a stakeholder is a name which every other person under that project comes in, but they have level of stake. You have big stakeholders, you have, you know? So that's why when you are managing a project, you use stake, you see when I was doing the analysis yesterday, I used stakeholder power grid. Power grid will help you place every stakeholder where their interests are, how powerful they are. That's how you place them. Have I answered your question? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Oh. We'll then um, continue. Now, what we are going to do is to look into uh, project methodologies. You know, you see, you can see here, Agile is on top because it's the most accepted for now. Most companies are using Agile. So that's why I put it on the top. It's the leader for now. Tomorrow things might change, but for now, Agile is number one because it looks at what customers want and then try to carry them um, uh, along. Project methodology uh, refers to method used to manage um, a project from beginning to end. Project methodology ensure project um, outputs are realized within the given time line and uh, a budget. That's a um, project methodology. They help you to manage your project from beginning to the end. Most of us must be hearing about projects like Agile and the rest of them. Even if you're not taking this course before, you must have somehow be hearing about. Uh, but if you're not, this is what product, project methodology is. It's the method you use to manage your project. Uh, your, uh, let me put in a very simple, it's a method to manage pro, uh, projects so that you won't have problems. <coughs> We have to start from um, here. You see, agile, waterfall, range two, lane, um, six sigma or sigma six, and the uh, agile. We have to start with um, range two uh, methodology. Range two is a very popular project management uh, method used by people and organizations from wide ranging industry and sectors. It's a flexible method that guides you through the essentials to manage pro uh, successful projects regardless of scales. Build upon seven principles, themes and processes. Prince two can be tailored to meet your specific um, 
requirement. That's Prince too. Uh, it's been very powerful. There's a lot of um, even certification, Prince two certification used to be extremely powerful. What Prince two means is a, a project um, in controlled environment. You know, it looks at these uh, principles, uh, business case, organization, quality, plan, risk, change, and progress. So that's how he uses all these things to manage um, a project. But to be honest with you, uh, people are still um, using the bot. It's no longer as uh, powerful as it used to be. Um, it's beginning to lose its um, credibility based on my own finding. Some people are still using it, but the companies are no longer crazy about Prince 2 um, the way they used to be. You know, I would I remember that was the first thing I wanted to the first uh, project management certification I wanted to do those days. So that is uh, Prince 2. Hi. Then the next methodology is. Um, waterfall methodology waterfall you see the name waterfall comes from just like the way waterfall if you are pouring water from up just like falling down that's just because of the sequential nature and the depend hierarchical dependency you must follow this process before you you, you 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 manage your project your 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 project is very rigid in nature. For instance, if you are managing a project using a waterfall, first you you gather your requirement, you design your requirement, you develop, you test, you deploy, you maintain. You cannot. Um, do testing uh, without development. You must follow it like this. It's a must. It's so rigid that once the project has once has, uh, uh, it has been approved, they pro if you are using um, a waterfall, once the project has been approved, it's very difficult to amend. You must have to it's very difficult. Once you are amending one part of the project, it's almost like you are destroying the whole project. So it's very rigid. And because of that, uh, companies, you know, custom, customers need changes all the time. You might be developing one particular solution or product to, to satisfy customers. And tomorrow, you find out that customers, they don't want it that way again. This is how we want it. And if you are using a waterfall, it's going to be difficult. If you have started a project, it's going to be difficult. Unlike Agile, which if in Agile, if a customer's changes, um, if a customer's uh, need changes, maybe the need becomes obsolete, you just stop immediately. You follow, you do what customers want. So, but in waterfall is not that way. It's very rigid, but it's very good in in, in planning. There are so many at time project managers managers will spend most of their time in planning, and by the time you even finish planning, the, the project become obsolete. They like documentation. There's high level of documentation in waterfall. There is high level of bureaucracy in waterfall. And so many companies, they don't like it. They want something flexible. And that's why so many are moving to, to Agile that is flexible in uh, managing their, their product. So in, in Agile, Agile, they are, they are more interested in a software that is working than a documentation. <laughs> Nobody's eating, documentation is paperwork. Nobody's eating paperwork. 
what we want is that uh, we can use this software to chat very well, to send messages, to make payments. We, we, know, we don't want, uh, people don't care about how documented, how beautiful the, 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 you documented the process. The main thing after documentation and it doesn't work, it doesn't meet customers' um, need, it means nothing. So that's why people want something that will make customers happy, not what um, the how beautifully you, you package, the, you documented the work. So that is a waterfall. You know, people don't use it again. And we are not going to use it either. I can see that some people like making noise. Once you you move them, they will just unmute themselves so, so that they can just make a noise, which is not that's not fair. The next thing is um lean, lean methodology. Lean methodology is very powerful. You know, it's a very powerful um project management methodology. Company, they love um, Lean methodology. Lean is a strategy for achieving significant improvement in performance through the continuous elimination of uh, wasted resources. On that lane, you map out a value stream, identify the waste, eliminate the waste, reduce value, uh, produce value to the customer and the drive organizational change. Lean is mainly, they mainly use uh, lean in operation and uh, manufacturing companies. Lean is, they, 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 they use lean to, for waste reduction. Another way for company to make money is not just by it's not just by selling, um, increasing sales. You might be increasing sales, but there is so much, so much waste. You are wasting a lot of resources while trying to produce the product. So companies decide that another powerful way to make money for them is to reduce waste. When you reduce waste during production, then, um, you find out that uh, you still be making money. So and you find out these days, if you go to so many, let me use the one that is very close to us. If you go to so many uh, hotels, for instance, in Nigeria now, you will ask, if you order for food, it will take some time for them to prepare food and serve you your food. So they prepare the food, you make order, and then they, they, they start preparing it from freshness. No, they, they are not just doing it because they want your food to be fresh. Let me tell you, it's not because they don't want your food to be fresh. It's because they don't want waste. They, want, they don't want a situation where they will prepare all the meals and keep it, and maybe at the end of the day, they won't have enough customers that will come and eat the food, and then they will throw the food away. So they will prefer that when you order, they prepare. Whenever you order, they prepare. And that will help them to save, um, to reduce waste and then be making money. It makes sure that in, in, whatever they produce is what the customers want. It's whatever is, they, they produce based on demand. Not uh, before it used to be, uh, you see so many restaurants, they will cook every food and then they will take it to their uh, selling point. I will find out that so many at times they don't have enough customers to come and eat those food. And those food will become waste. At times they will go and throw it away. That is waste. So instead of wasting that kind of uh, resources, is it not better you wait for customers to make order? When customers make order, you then um, prepare the food and give it to them. And that is the, the best way 
to make money as well. So that is uh, what Agile does. So Agile looks at the supply chain, you know, what it takes to deliver a product. The supply chain from when the customer orders for the product and from the time they produce it and deliver it. So they will identify all the wasteful resources and then they will buy cut all those wastes and then they will deliver. So these are some of the things we are, we are going to be uh, looking at. So that's the importance of um, a lane. Over time, I, I, I will show the diagram how um, lean is um, used because it's very, very important. Although uh, going diving too deep into lean is a bit out of scope because of um, you guys are still coming up in project management. Uh, there's some of uh, part of the analysis uh, that you might start getting confused because it requires a lot of analysis. But it's good to understand how lean works. It's we use lean to reduce uh, waste for organization, eliminate waste. That's how that's the importance. When you reduce waste, then you improve the process. Then this is um, Six Sigma. Most of the time, Six Sigma goes hand in hand with their uh, lane. Six Sigma is a, a business aim to improve process, reduce waste and error, and increase customer satisfaction through an uh, throughout an organization, driven by data and the statistical analysis. One of the area where I've used uh, um, Six Sigma is uh, uh, robotic process automation. I've used Six Sigma to automate a process, data flow, to, to improve the whole um, system in this the in, the in the project i handled the company they are having a data quality issue they are they are, they are data um having problems it's not data there's a lot of inconsistencies in their data and the the, the, the cause happened that they are using manual handling <clears throat> to to handle their data and after my analysis i find out that they are using manual handling and it's not good for, for data um, uh, for good for data quality, and I provide solution for them to automate the process so that instead of using that uh, hand to, to be uh, updating some of their data, the, the, the bot will be pulling the data automatically, and that's how it works. Uh, for instance, even in this our project, you see. Our website is integrated with um, this Zoom. And our website is um, integrated uh, with um, a YouTube. So it, these are still part of the uh, a data um, analysis. So we are, we are pulling data from, from YouTube. And these are some of the um, the way you use um, uh, automation. You automate a system. So in C Sigma, you define a problem. You measure uh, quality of the problem. You analyze the problem to identify the cost of the problem. Then you implement a solution to solve the problem. Then you maintain the solution. So it becomes a continuous improvement. That's um, C Sigma. 
why a lot of people are, are shying away from Six Sigma is that maybe a lot of professionals, it requires a high level of uh, analysis, you know, mainly for business analysts anyway, because it's not, this is mainly for business analysts, not for core um, project managers. But it's good uh, for you to have the knowledge of Six Sigma. They have a Six Sigma certif a certification. They have a um, um, white belt, yellow belt, green belt, and black belt. So the more certificate, the more you grow in Six Sigma, is the more your belt grows. And the highest belt is black belt. If you have, if you are a black belter in Six Sigma, you know, you are not, you, there's no way you'll be looking for a job. Job will be looking for you. So, so that's the importance of Six Sigma. And uh, most of the time they combine, they combine Six Sigma and, uh, and uh, Lean. They call it Lean Six, uh, Lean Six Sigma. So these are the, the importance of um, this um, uh, project uh, uh, management methodology for process improvement improve the process so that you add value to the process, either reduce, um, uh, increase value in the process, in the supply chain. So that's Six Sigma um, for you. And um, the next one is, um, Agile methodology. So agile methodology is the one we are going to be using. And that's um, what most of the organizations are using. It's very powerful. You know, if you if you can develop yourself within agile, then that will be very good for you. So I've said something about agile. Is for uh, agile is a project management where you look at a customer's need. You develop customers, uh, you, you manage your project based on feedback from customers. And uh, you continuously keep refining and developing what's called uh, listening to the customers. It's a continuous process. So these are the areas we are going to be um, concentrating in our project. There's a lot to talk about uh, Agile. Agile focuses on the iterative and incremental delivery that is core to continuous improvement. Agile focuses on a Scrum framework, which has a huge emphasis on the product being design and a flexible approach. I've uh, said something about um, uh, Scrum, which is part of Agile before. So we're now moving into Agile and we are going to continue with Agile for a while. And even during our work experience, we are going to be working with Agile on how to, to master Agile because that's what um, most companies uh, are demanding these days. We are looking at what the, uh, the it's not about uh, what you like, it's about, we are looking at the market, what will make you to be more scalable, more sellable in the market, based on statistics and uh, I think uh, agile project management is the best. So that's why we are focusing uh, on agile. So we have um, what we call um, Agile uh, Manifesto. This is the manifesto is uh, uh, we are uh, uncovering a better way of developing software by doing it and helping others to do it. Through uh, uh, this work, we have come 
to a value. This is the kind of uh, thing, this, the, the, the language Aja is looking at. Individuals and interactions, working softwares. In Agile, you must work together. They're looking at you working with your fellow um, uh, team. In a team, you have to collaborate in a team, work together to be able to develop what uh, provides value. Working software, like what I said before, is they, 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 they have this tendency of working software, that this software is working, people like it. Is deliver uh, is solving the problem that we want it to solve. They are not interested in the voluminous uh, paperwork. Not that you are not going to organize your your work or, or plan your project, but not like they are trying to to remove all these unnecessary bureaucracies in their project management. So this is the what uh, working solution working software is all about. Uh, customer collaboration. You need to collaborate with your customers. You need to find out what customers want. You need to look at customers' review of products. What are they saying? What do they want? You know, these are the way uh, Agile works. Most of these days, you are seeing um, so many companies, they are on social media, making one uh, advertisement, trying to get survey. Find out what the customer is talking about their product. This is agile in progress. That is agile. So agile triggers so many things. Uh, responding to change. Agile, as uh, talking about change management, change agent, business analyst, you know, it's all about change, creating, solving, finding change, bridging the gap. And the only way you can do this is using Agile because Agile responds quickly to change because of its flexible nature. So you find out what customers want and you respond to that. So this is why Agile methodology is uh, very key. And to be honest, I will uh, advise you to, 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 to read more on Agile. There's a lot of um, I will share some relevant um, uh, links, like uh, scrum.org. If you go to scrum.org, they have a lot of articles. But the issue is that I will find the one so that you'll be guided. You, if you are not guided, you might just go down and be reading things and they might start confusing. But I will, I will get more relevant links where you need to go and study Agile because Agile is very, very key as a project, upcoming project manager. It's very interesting, you know, so there is no need to, uh, to panic. It's very interesting. I loved Agile when I, when I started my Agile um, project management journey. <clears throat> and we'll look at... Uh, Agile principles. Number one in Agile principles is to satisfy the customer. The customer is the key. Everything is working around satisfying the customer. Then number two is a welcome to change. You have to to, to, to welcome change. You need to be uh, a change agent. You need to be change, have change uh, uh, mindset. Agile delivers frequently. Agile, they don't believe in uh, when they are building their software, they don't believe in uh, producing everything once. They believe in delivering it small, small, small. For instance, when Facebook started, because Facebook is using Agile as well. Some of us know when Facebook started. Facebook don't have all these functionalities Facebook now have now. But now over time, gradually, gradually, 
Facebook is developing a lot of functionalities. There is nothing you cannot do on Facebook. So Facebook is monitoring us, asking questions, what do we want, you know? And we are telling Facebook what we want. Tomorrow, if we tell Facebook we want a, a group, the Facebook will create a group for us. We tell Facebook we want um, uh, Metaverse. Facebook will create Metaverse for us. We tell Facebook we want uh, uh, to be selling coins, maybe Bitcoins and the rest of them on Facebook. Before you know it, Facebook will create it, integrate it. You start say, be able to say. So that's how Facebook works. And that's the agile mentality. They will ask you what you want and they will do it. And they will keep you. So that's why Facebook have been able to keep billions of users on Facebook. Tomorrow people will say, I will leave Facebook. If you leave Facebook, where are you going to? Nobody is leaving Facebook. And if Facebook ban you, you become frustrated because Facebook has taken time to study the customer know what the customer wants, and then be giving it to customer. So the fourth thing, the fourth principle in Agile is uh, work together. Agile wants people to be project team. As a project, you need to collaborate with your team very well. You need to work together. They believe in working together is the best way to, to, to brainstorm, and find solution to, to problems. And this is what Agile is uh, preaching, working together. And even during your work experience, you'll be grouped, into, uh, you'll be, uh, grouped uh, group by group so that you people can work together in an Agile way, collaborating, finding solution on how to uh, address the problem your clients uh, or your company is facing. Trust and support. In Agile, Agile, you need to trust your, 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 your team member. If you're working as a team, everybody needs to trust each other. Like now, we are working as a team here. We are working as a team and we need to trust ourselves. You need to trust me that I can be able to deliver. If you don't trust me, I will lose that uh, motivation. If I find out that you're uh, making a a comment that nobody trusts me. You find out that the drive, the motivation will go down. And that's how it works in a team. If you are working in a team and there is no trust, the motivation, the morale will go down. So Agile encourages team. Any, as a project manager in an in Agile um, environment, most of them the, the, in Agile, they don't use project manager. What they use is Scrum Master. But you as a project manager, when you are working with um, like a scrum, you'll be called a scrum master or a product owner. But most of the time, scrum master. Your duty is to make sure that you, you, you promote trust. You support the team, you know, for them to be working together. Agile believe in face-to-face -face conversation. Like I said, Agile, they like you working together so that you can brainstorm. In Agile, if you are delivering, um, uh, you are working on a project, every morning, that is the principle. You need to, to have a meeting. We call it daily stand-up, daily stand-up meeting, where you and your team, you, you come together every morning, you say, you, you ask questions, if the Scrum Master will ask, what did you do yesterday? What are you doing today? And then what are the problems you are facing? So when you are talking about all those things every day, it's a way of um, managing risk. Because if, you are, if, if, if you're asking your project team, what are you doing today? What are you going to do tomorrow? Or what, are you, uh, did, what did you do yesterday? What are your challenges? You will keep um, the team abreast of the challenges everybody is having, and they work as a team. Once one person is having a problem, everybody will collaborate to solve the problem. They feel that an injury to one is an injury to, to many. That is agile mindset. So the number seven is that agile, they believe in working software. 
once they, they deliver something and it's working, everybody is happy. They are not interested in so much paperwork, just like I said before. And uh, number N is sustained development. They like a situation where they are, they are what they are doing, they sustain it, they keep the momentum going by collaborating, you know, supporting each other, trusting each other. Another old one, number nine, is uh, continuous attention. This continuous attention is by like every time they, they come together. It's not like uh, uh, at the end of the week, you go on there because you have assigned uh, a, a task, maybe um, a canceling. You are responsible for um, creating work uh, breakdown structure. I'll wait uh, till uh, weekend. At the end of the week, I will go and ask instantly. Have you created a work break that? No, that's not agile. Agile, if I, if you ask instantly to create a work breakdown structure and to submit the work breakdown structure at the end of the week. Every day, green agile, uh, green uh, um, uh, daily stand-up. Or daily meeting. Kinsley will want to know how far Kinsley have gone with the what breakdown structure Kinsley is creating. We know how far Kinsley have gone. Kinsley, are you having any problem creating this work breakdown structure? These are the things. That's how agile work. And agile number ten is to maintain simplicity. They like everything, like their requirements. To be simple, it's not like uh, they don't believe in uh, uh, technical jargons. Use simple language everybody will understand. Don't use, uh, using big, big vocabulary doesn't solve uh, 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 solution. They don't bring solution to, to problems. Use simple language. Everybody will understand. Make things, make your user story to be very brief. It should be time based. It should be measurable. These are the things, the way Agile was. Everything should be organized, very simple and uh, effective. And another one in Agile that Agile team must be self organized. When you are working as a team in Agile, if you're having a problem, it's expected that you, the team, should be able to resolve your problems. You don't need to all the time, you start reporting to the management. No, if you have a problem, try to resolve it. That's what Agile is preaching. Try to resolve your problem. Try so many times. If a two, um, uh, if uh, members of the group are having problems, two members, are, the third person should be able to try to resolve them. You know, that is what is agile, <clears throat> the preaching of agile, self-organizing. You are a team, you can do it. And then number 12 is uh, uh, reflect and adjust. This is what we call retrospective meeting. Reflect and that your retrospective meeting means that at the end of every uh, sprint or every milestone, you come together, then you look at a kind of in house assessment. Uh, what have we not been doing well? Um, we look at everybody. At the end of the day, we identify where we're having uh, problems. Okay, so. This is how we are going to um, improve. You do it on your own. You are not going to wait for for outsider to come and do that. You do it on your own, and then you proceed. So these are the key principles that is guiding agile. And if you can master that, I don't think you have a problem as a scrum master or as a project manager. Benefits of um, Agile. 
these are some of the bene key benefits of um, agile methodologies. Stakeholder engagement, transparency, improves quality, focus on business value, predictable cost and shadow, early and predictable delivery, and focuses on uh, users. These are the principles. We've said uh, almost all these things that uh, we've just uh, we've spoken about, but I just wanted to, to list it like this so that will be simple for you to pick it um, when you are going through your notes or when you are doing your revision. And this is an um, agile Scrum overview. I've shown, you've seen it before when we are starting in Scrum. This is just another diagram of how you lose from a product backlog to sprint to daily uh, Scrum during the uh, um, sprint and then to deliverables. I'll say this um, in the and when I was talking about Scrum, as you can see here, is the Agile Scrum. Uh, this is see the same thing I I did uh, I've explained during Scrum. So I am not going to repeat it again. So still agile process, agile scrum process. It's still about scrum, the same thing. But here is that there are some things like uh, a bond down chart here. During the agile process, you have a, a bond down chart, but during the, the bond down chart will be on um, Jira, I think Jira is one of the, the software that uses bond down chart. It helps you to know the amount of uh, time requires for you to deliver your sprint. And in an uh, agile, agile process, see, we have uh, the team comprises of the Scrum Master who is leading the agile team. Scrum Master is the leader, is in charge of making sure that the, 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 the project is going on resolving issues, conflict. If you're having any problem, the person you need to, to report to is the Scrum Master. And the Scrum Master will run around and sort of, that is the major uh, responsibility of the Scrum Master to drive the project, the, 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 the project forward. And the product owner is representing the client the customer's need is just there to make sure he supplies the backlog and make sure that uh, the team is doing uh, what should be done to deliver the, 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 the product they are working on. Then the stakeholders, the stakeholders, like I said, in a project, everybody that have a stake is a stakeholder, but we might have big uh, stakeholders. At times we refer to big stakeholders as the big but the issue is that everybody that have a stake in that project is a stakeholder. Then we look at users. We don't ignore users. Users are at times called customers. You are producing that for them. That's what Agile is looking at. They always try to understand what the, the users want, how their changes, their, their, their taste is changing and they will readjust based on the user's change. And then another uh, important person in Agile is the team members, which is the Scrum team. So that is Agile. I've spoken about uh, product backlog, user stories, um, Sprint retrospective, uh, sprint um, uh, demo. So 
and that is it in Agile. So, then in Agile, the main activity in um, Scrum is a sprint. That is the main thing. During the sprint, you collaborate, have a meeting to deliver the, the product. The first thing is to look at the sprint goal. The goal of the product, the vision. What are you doing? Then you look at the features. That is the next thing you look at while you are planning. Then you look at the, um, the features is the, call it the roadmap. Then you look at the time table for the release. When are you releasing this product? You need to work within the time. Time is very, very important. Time to market. That is one thing with Agile. They are looking at the market, monitoring the market at all, at all time. Because you might be producing something and your competitor will launch the, the, the product you are producing. Then it means that you go out of market because the thing you are producing is already in the market. So they always monitoring the market, making sure that their competitors are not beating them. That's the timetable, time to release. Most be money. That's why Agile is very, very effective. Then you plan iteration of the project. The iteration is the, the, the small functionality that you are deploying. If it's um, um, a small, like a shopping cart that you guys are working on uh, deploying, then you plan it. Iteration of the product. We call it a uh, sprint planning. Then you look at the daily meeting. These are the, the roadmap in three. Daily meeting is the daily stand up. As a, as a, a sprint, uh, as a, a scrum team, you must meet every day in Agile. So, but the issue is that uh, these days, a lot of people don't respect Agile. They don't meet every day. They will be claiming that they are practicing Agile, but in the actual sense of it, they are not practicing Agile. I, even my, myself, I've, I've been in a team so many times where the team members, we say, no, we can't be having our daily stand-up. Okay, let's be having it like uh, twice every week because people are lazy to, to, to come out and meet every day. So... People are, are not uh, um, uh, honoring those, which is wrong. That's very wrong. People should be able to apply every agile principle. So if you are a good uh, agile um, evangelist, somebody who is practicing agile very well, we call the person agile evangelist. If you are a good agile evangelist, you must observe all these things very well. Then another thing is a review of the a created project. After the product you have created, you need to review it. During the review is when you call all the stakeholders involved, even the, the customers, invite them to demonstrate what you've done, for them to see what you've done, that what you've done, you, you guys have produced, is working. It's a working software. And for them to look at it. And there you have a, a UAT, user acceptance testing. There you, a user will need to come and test it, uh, test the, the product and make sure that it's working. And everybody will be happy. Once they pass the, the product review and the product is um, working well, the stakeholders are well, then the next thing is to deploy the, the created product. Many a times, you might just create uh, a product and you didn't deploy it. You can keep it uh, somewhere, depending whenever you want to deploy it. As we are talking, I have so many softwares that are working that I've created. 
but I just kept it. I didn't want, I don't want to deploy them yet, but it's working. You can keep your product, but the main thing is that it's working. Then the next one is um, a feedback. And this feedback um, is called a lesson learned. You call it sprint retrospective, where you guys collaborate in-housely to look at on how to improve. So, you know, I'll be repeating myself on this Agile because of the importance of uh, Agile. And this is where we are be, we'll be doing most of our work experience. You need to understand it. So that's why I'll be talking about Agile, Agile, Agile. Yeah, Agile Project Management Rule. We have product owner. Product owner is the expert on customer's need, product and their priorities. He collaborate with the customers to find out what they need. And uh, after then he brings the, the, the customer's need where other team members will then start working on that. Another one is development team members. These are the people that create the product, the developers the testers, these are the web developers, web uh, designers, they are the, they call them development team. Another one is the Scrum Master. Scrum Master keeps agile process uh, consistent and support development team members. Is the, he manages the, the Scrum, the Scrum team. Make sure that no, no one is having problem if you have a problem, you report to Scrum Master and he will sort you out. Then stakeholders. Anyone interested in the project is a stakeholder, like what I said. Agile mentor. Agile mentor is a coach. Like if I'm now very, very experienced, I become a very powerful person. There's there some certification anyway I need to, to do to become an agile coach. I'll become an agile coach. Any experienced person in implementing agile is, there, is an agile mentor. So I, I can call myself an agile mentor. I feel I'm highly experienced in uh, agile. So, that is Agile. Agile is very powerful. And uh, I'm hoping most of you um, will be working uh, as an Agile evangelist. This is an info, infographic Agile in a nutshell. I included this thing here because when uh, I'm going to share this uh, after the, the lecture, when I'm going to share the slide, you can, um, you can when you are going to download the slide, you might, it will be very, very easy for you to be looking at it and uh, understand it the more because uh, say picture speaks um, louder. So you can look at it why agile, ways of agile, to be agile, uh, these are the things. I'm not going to go into it. It's an infographic, this thing for you to look at. I've been talking about Agile. It's just an Agile in a nutshell in a uh, infographic way. So, another thing um, uh, is a conflict management. In projects, um, there's always, uh, you can't say there's, you can't have a conflict in, in, in project, but we are looking at a way of uh, resolving conflict, more especially within the project team. So uh, that's why conflict is an inevitable, is inevitable in a project, but it is important to handle the situation as soon as it comes. 
when you have a, a conflict, maybe between two members, the, the first thing I'll say that we'll, we'll give them a room for, for them to handle that conflict, to resolve it within themselves, to be matured within themselves and resolve their, their situation. But if you find out that they're the, as a project manager, that is their responsibility. You need to tell them to go and uh, resolve. But if they find out they can't resolve it, you invite them. You have one-on-one -on -one with them. Find out the root cause. You know, you find out the root cause of the problem. You don't have, you don't so, as anything, if anything is happening in a project, it's your duty to find out the root cause and make sure that you solve that problem. You don't solve it halfway. You know, you don't solve it, solve it half, halfway. You make sure you, you, you find out the, the root cause. Compromise is very good for the team, for them to reach a compromise on how to handle their, their situation. If they have it, there should be a compromise on how to, to make sure that such things don't happen again. As a project manager, you need to be assertive and they collaborate. You need to be firm, you know? When you address, just if anything happens, make sure that you address the issue. You don't need to, to, to look at people's faces. You need to be firm. You need to be you communicate very well. These are ways you can manage your project very well. And you need to set a standard. It's very, very important to set a standard in project management. Where everybody, you are the project manager. You set the ground rules. You need to be influential. You need to mean what you say. These are the ways you can uh, minimize uh, uh, conflict. In conflict management, they just like said, uh, you need to, to listen, separate the problem from the person, negotiate, team bonding events, and regular meeting. You know, it, 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 as a project manager, you must have a way of uh, bringing your team for you people to bond. Like, if like, during the weekend, so I see project managers during the weekend, you invite all the team members in his house and they will just uh, spend the weekend. It's a way of bonding. It's a way of making sure that increasing the trust. You start working as a team, more like a family, you know, not just like a, team, a project team. Maybe a weekend, you say that this weekend, we are going to the beach. You know, and everybody will go to the beach and have a good time. These are the way of making sure that the team bond and they will help to um, reduce um, conflicts in, um, in project um, and management. So this is um, all we have for tonight and uh, I think we need to stop here uh, for tonight. And are we stop sharing and uh, look at the house again. So, uh, do anybody have any question at this point in time? Are yes, I do. Yes. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Okay. Precious. Okay. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. come up there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the lecture. It was very insightful. Um, so I, I just like to learn in bits and pieces. Please, I want to really know the clear difference. Well, not really clear difference between techniques and methodologies. It seems they interlap at different points since we use the scrum technique, scrum technique rather in the agile. So how can we differentiate it? And at what point do they kind of interlap? 
I don't know if I'm asking the question. Yeah, 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 yeah. The question you are, you are, the question is, yeah. uh, is in order. The, the, the methodology is, um, is, 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 let me say, is a high level. Is, is the methodology is a high level, is a method and techniques, these techniques, all the techniques comes under methodology. Okay. Methodology is a method. Within that method, there is a technique of doing things in that method. Okay, sir. So methodology uh, is a bigger picture of handling um, uh, project and uh, in a methodology we can have um, up to in methodology we can have up to five I'm techniques we put together that makes up that methodology. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Thank you. So, so all those techniques are used, eh? like like a screw, kanban, um, uh, what bread that structure? What bread that structure? All of them um, comes under. Um, all of them comes under methodology. So, thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, any more questions? None from my end. Thank you, sir. All right. You're welcome. So, are we having more questions, House? So everybody's happy. Then expect expect um, your assignment. I will post it on the um, notice board. I will make sure that I equally uh, post it on the on the group WhatsApp team. We are going to be using the, the group WhatsApp team I, for fast communication. I'm not going to, if you have important things, that's be the, the easiest way it will reach people. And uh, the Facebook group is very good for collaboration because at times we might want to share some project <laughs> management videos for you to watch. <laughs> may, at times I might want to share some videos from YouTube for you to watch. And uh, I think the best place to be sharing it is there. At times I want to upload some documents, pictures for you to look at and analyze. That might be the best place for you to, to do it. And then I'll be able to assess your understanding based on your comments. Like now after this uh, assignment, you need to upload your own and then I will make, um, I'll look at it and know who is following and who is not following. I know how to help those that are not really, uh, those that are struggling. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. And um, tomorrow, I think uh, the next time we are going to have. Um, lecture will be on Monday. I really plan to finish it um, um, this week, but I want to give you people some break. Is that good? Yes, sir. But uh, please, sir, try to upload the second uh, video for us to watch. Every and video this one will be available to you. Every video has been uploaded. We can have do the second video. We have three videos uploaded already, but I will look at it because a lot of people are watching it already. Uh, but I will look at it. You tell me maybe the device we are using or what's happening. I will I will look at it less, but I the video is there and people are watching it already. Uh, if you are struggling, you let me know how you are struggling. So I'll know how to help you. But all the videos are there, and it's, okay, it's, it's, fun it's uh, functioning very well. 
Okay, sir, sir, please, I would like to find out. Is the, is the class is Monday to Friday, 8 to 10 p.m. Nigerian time? Yes. Okay, for four months, right? No, it's not for four months. We are going to finish the training, like this class I'm having with you, both project management and business analysis, in one month. So okay. as soon as I'm finishing the project management business analysis will start. So we tend to finish this one within one month. And then you'll be, you go to um, one of our consulting firm where you will start your work placement. You did the work placement for one month, uh, for, four, for three months, where you are going to be handling a real life projects like building softwares. Uh, like using agile methodology to build software. That's what we are going to be doing. So we are not uh, playing. Is there, um, if you really want to learn, here is the place to learn uh, practically that will help you. Sorted? Sorted. Yes, it's very clear. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. Thank you. Good night, sir. Thank you very much, sir.